Now let's look at creating an adaptive column. In this case, we have one with four adaptive points. You can't see the number one point here. It seems to be um, hidden a little bit. But we're going to build one now. I think we'll do it with five adaptive points. We'll put three trees on the top. So I'll close this one off. Um, I won't even bother saving it, and we'll make a new one. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to File. We're going to go to New, Family. Save this project. And when the window opens up, we're going to navigate to a generic model adaptive, which means it will allow us to put adaptive points in. I'm going to click Open. And we have uh, only one reference level, level 1. If we go to the... Uh, like the front elevation here, you'll see we only have one reference level. So let's go ahead and copy up a couple of reference levels. So I'll select this, and we'll do copy, moldable, and I'll just come up, uh, well, I'll come up to 20 feet, and then I'll come up another 20 feet. That'll set the scale for our adaptive columns. And I'll go back to the 3D view, and let's insert some points so that we can make them adaptive. So I'm going to set the first working plane as the bottom one, put a, um, an adaptive point, and it doesn't seem to give us an indication when we're aligning in 3D to, to um, the grid. So I'm going to just put a point anywhere and then just drag it over until it aligns with those two grids. This is not really actually critical because they are adaptive points. They are able to move. Let's go to the mid-level. I'll set the reference plane again and put an adaptive point there and like I said anywhere and then I'll select it and I'll move it until I get that uh, indication that I'm intersecting with the grid there we go and now that one is right on top of the other if we were to look at that in the top view I believe you'll see they're both lined up with the grid so we'll pop back over to the 3D view and now we want to put three places up on the top level so I'm going to set the top one and we'll place one, two, three to make our tree. And they're randomly placed. If we look at them in this view, I could probably drag them off so they made a little more uh, sense to us. And go back to our view here. And now what we want to do is uh, grab all of these and make them adaptive. You'll notice we have a selector that appears when we grab these points. And we want to um, then make sure that we have a sequence that makes sure, and it will automatically probably increment from level 1 to call that adaptive point 1. The mid one is 2, and then 3, 4, and 5 are the top uh, connections where we'll connect to our space frame truss. So now, it's, now the next task is to start building a little bit of form out of this. So what I want to do is I want to set a reference plane for the base and make a circle. And let's pull this out. Um, two feet would be really large. Let's make it one foot six. That'll make it a three foot diameter base. And we want to make sure that's a reference circle. So I'm going to select it and make sure that it says reference. I probably used model line when I built it. We'll go up to two. We'll set a reference plane for that one. We'll set a circle, make sure it's a reference, and make a circle. Whoops, I don't know. Start that again. I'll set the reference plane and circle, and I'm going to set that for reference. And that's, for some reason, it's doing that wrong. So let me do it the other way. I'll just um, confirm that I'm setting the reference plane, start a reference off of that point. And the bottom, this will now be tapered down to, let's say, two feet, one foot in diameter. And I'm going to manually change this to a reference circle. And I'm going to do the same thing now with the three top points. So this is one foot, and we'll move that down until it's now six inches at these. So I'll just go to each one individually here and set a reference and draw a circle. We'll come up very small, three inches. Make sure I set that to be a reference line because it will not behave adaptively later on. And we'll test these just now. Let's show you an example. I'll just pull that off and you can see how the circle moves with it. 
and you should check yours as you're building them to make sure that you have that same functionality. Come in here and let's do number three now. Set our plane, make our circle. We're doing these three inches, I believe. And set this to a reference plane. And the last point up here, number five, zoom in. Set a reference plane and three inch circle. And make sure that circle is, in fact, a reference. And then we can start connecting these in form. So I'm going to zoom in and grab that circle down here. I'll grab the other one. I might have to hit tab. And then I'll hit control and grab those two. And right away, I'll go to create form. We now have the main column. And we want to test this performance or behavior for adaptiveness. And we'll move these around, and they do. And then I'll just undo them to put them back in their original position. And now we'll work on the tree going up. So I'll come in here. This one will be probably the more difficult. I'm going to go to wireframe so we can see our reference circle better. And grab it. Um, tab until I grab that one. That says it's the reference line. And then I'll come in here and grab this one and hold the control key down. Select both of them and create form. Then we'll move that reference point just to make sure that we have adaptive behavior. And I'll do the same thing. Now I'll tab until I grab that reference line again. Reference line. Then I'll come in here and hold the control key down and select the other one. Create the form. And we have one more to do with that. Tab until I can grab the circle. Make sure it's the reference. Come in and grab this one. Control key down. Create form, solid form. Now we have our three. And I can go back to rendering it in a solid form here so that we can see what it looks like. Kind of rotate around it. And now we're ready to actually import that into our space frame and attach it. And I'll do that in the next clip. One last thing I want to do, though, is save this with a name. So I'll go to File. I'll do Save As, a Family. And we'll save this as the column. 